Chairs No Waiting, episode number 781, Stranger in Town. Two Chairs No Waiting is brought to you each week by the folks over at WeaversDepartmentStore.com. Guys, head over there and check out things. There's a bunch of discontinued shirts. You can go and check those out. And while you're there, check out the new stuff like Aunt B's Wooden Spoon. It says on it, I ain't about to be beat to death with no spoon. Or while you're there, you might want to get you an axe. That's right. You can get an axe that says pow, pow, pow. Or an axe that says, with an axe, an axe, shazam. (laughs) They're pizza cutters. Go check that out. And if you really need it, you can get some Colonel Harvey's Indian Elixir flask for your Colonel Harvey's tonic. Head over to weaversdepartmentstore.com and check it out. (laughs) Two Chairs No Waiting is also brought to you by folks just like you, the executive producer of episode number 781. That's this one. As uh, the attendees from last year's Mayberry Meetup, we got another one coming up in July. Come out with us. So thank you to all of them. And the Patreon patron of the week for 781 is Brian Rose. Hello, everybody. I'm Alan Newsom, the host of Two Chairs No Waiting. And wow, great to be here. It's been a fun uh, time here. It's, uh, we just got through Easter this year. Uh, we've gone through that this past weekend. Now we're heading into April. Today's actually, as I record this, it's actually April 1st. Been trying to avoid all the April Fool's j- jokes all day long. <laughs> Done a pretty good job. Hopefully you made it through it as well, because here we are on the second when this comes out. Hopefully, hopefully you've made it through that. And uh, now we're getting back into uh, doing episodes from the Andy Griffith Show, going through and kind of giving you a rundown on them. So uh, we've been doing that this year and taking a few breaks along the way to have some other fun and Mayberry stuff. But uh, we're going to head into a stranger in town. And then we'll play trivia and do some other fun stuff at the end of the podcast. So if you'll remember, Stranger in Town was the, uh, it was the uh, 10th episode filmed. And it was the 12th episode aired. So it's season one, episode 12 is what this will be considered. If you look it up in different places, it's going to look up different. I mean, they all do it differently. Everybody seems to have a different way of... uh, uh, annotating when this episodes or when all the episodes were there so if you head over to uh, the mayberry.info website you can look up all the episode guides over there and go to season one and you can go to this exact episode and follow along uh, as you do or re-look up this information it's all mostly all there so go and check that out if you would like uh, okay, so this is uh, we'll just run through a quick synopsis of the episode, and then we will go a little bit more in depth. But you remember, it's about Ed Sawyer. He's some mysterious stranger that arrives in Mayberry and you know puts the entire town on edge. They, they're worried about who he is when he when he comes in and displays this eerie familiarity with the people of the whole town of Mayberry. He knows the people. He knows places. He knows things. Uh, he knows all kinds of stuff that just makes everybody pretty nervous. And fi- finally, Andy confronts him and basically learns that Ed Sawyer, uh, he's not a foreign spy and he's not a spook or something like that. He's just a man uh, without a hometown. Okay, so that's that's what we get started on this episode. That's what it's about. Surely you've seen it. If you have not, <laughs> go back And check out the episodes because you'll definitely want to do that. So as the episode begins, we actually see in the barbershop, Barney is in the barber chair and he is getting his hair cut by Floyd. Now, this is the Floyd is Walter Baldwin, who is the first Floyd. Uh, So he is this is the only episode he appears in. But uh, Barney's in there getting his hair cut and Floyd and we say he's Floyd Colby. Because at some point it's Colby's tonsorial parlor, uh, even though Howard McNear's there at that time. We have a whole backstory for this. Uh, Norm Schultz, uh, the tribute artist for this version of Floyd, uh, Walter Baldwin version, uh, we've made up a whole backstory that the two Floyds actually work together. That that Walter Baldwin's Col- Floyd Colby is the one who got Floyd Lawson uh, to be a barber and helped train him and even even taught him how to cut hair uh, using cats that they caught in the alley back in the back. And originally, the barbershop, 
Floyd Lawson started working with Floyd Colby, so it was Floyd's, plural. And then eventually, when uh, Floyd Colby decided to retire, basically it added an apostrophe and it became Floyd's, and Floyd Lawson ran the barbershop from then on. So there you go. So they each worked part-time until then. So we that's why we didn't see uh, this Floyd, because uh, he retired right after this episode. All right, so that's the backstory. That's fake and made up, but that's what we use. I think it's a good one. So basically, a stranger gets out uh, off the bus from New York City, and the folks in Mayberry are just, you know, they're naturally just curious and want to know who this fella is. Uh, but he strolls right into the barber shop, and he starts calling everybody in there, basically Andy and Barney, really, and Floyd. He knows them all by name, and, you know, things. he knows all kinds of things like uh, that strangers are not supposed to know. Uh, and so they're suspicious. You know, they he knows Floyd has rheumatism. He knew Barney was a deputy, even though Barney was all covered up in the uh, the cape, the apron that you wear at the barber shop. So there's no way he could see that he was a deputy. He knows all that kind of stuff, and everybody's suspicions are really high because they don't really understand why he knows all this stuff. So he's a stranger, and his name's Ed Sawyer, and he's got all this knowledge of the goings on in and around Mayberry. It's just uncanny, right? Soon, as a result of all this, uh, he's accused of everything from being a foreign spy to a space alien. Uh, you know, he's he fr he's friendly, and he tries to fit in and settle down there, and but he's just coldly rejected by the residents of Mayberry because they're suspicious of him. Why does he know all this stuff, right? So they start uh, trying to figure it out because they even know the twins' names. You know, they, he knows all kinds of stuff that you just should not know if you've never even been to Mayberry, right? Never been to town. <laughs> so he knows all this. So he gets accused, like I said, of being a foreign spy. Uh, Andy's the only one that's willing to give him any kind of a break and wait and judge him until he knows all the facts. But even Andy starts thinking it's pretty curious, and uh, you know they 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 just don't understand it. So uh, as they go through of this, uh, finally Ed uh, <laughs> Ed heads over to the to the hotel and checks in. Andy and the crowd of people from Mayberry head over there and talking with Jason, trying to figure out why. Uh, who this man is, not why, but who this man is. How does he know so much? And Barney's really, really concerned about it and wants to go upstairs to uh, talk to him and try to figure out who he is. But then somebody mentions that, you know, I saw a TV show like this one time and it turned out that the fella was not of this world. He was an alien or a, a, a spirit. And then they asked Barney, Barney, you want to go up and talk to him? No, 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 no. Like Andy said, we'll, we'll just wait and see. He ain't done nothing. We, <laughs> so, so that happens. But he's still spying on him. Uh, so much to the fact, if you'll remember the great scene where Barney is there at the hotel. And he decides to go up and check out his room when Ed Sawyer leaves. And he reaches in to get the key out of the box there at the uh, behind the desk of the hotel and there is a mousetrap in there and Andy comes walking in and so Barney keeps his hand in the mousetrap uh, in the cubby where Andy won't see it and says what are you doing with your hand in there oh just ever so often I just come in stick my hand in there and he sticks his other hand in and there's a mousetrap in that one as well so he ends him up on both hands Oh, gosh, that was such a great scene. Uh, and, of course, he's just going off, 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 trying to get Andy to get him off of his hands. Oh, gosh, it's so great. Uh, so, anyway, as that goes along, Andy brings Ed into the courthouse and starts to talk to him, and they have a very curious encounter between Ed and Lucy Matthews. Now, now that's, by the way, the woman that he loves, but whom he has never even met, never seen her before. Uh, but Ed was asking Andy for help, uh, but uh, he uh, he comes on <laughs> he comes on a little strong because uh, he knows everything about her. He starts telling her about everything that he knows about her, and uh, he's he said he's just getting start. He's just warming up. That's what he actually says. And Andy says, "If you don't if you don't calm down, so I'm gonna have to bring you in." 
so he's very uh, excited about meeting Lucy, and she wants him to leave her alone. So basically, that's when he explains how he came to think of Mayberry as his hometown. And he reveals that he's a loner, he has no family, and no real home. And while he was in the Army, Ed befriended uh, Joe Larson from Mayberry. You know, he's the son of Pete and Eddie Larson. Uh, and he loved the stories that Joe told about back home so much that uh, he began to take the town newspaper. And even when he moved back home to the hotel that he lived in, uh, he would continue to get the paper and read uh, stories about the folks from Mayberry and he decided he wanted it to be his hometown. And when he saw the gas station was up for sale, he thought this was his chance. And so as he's telling Andy the story, Andy says, well, this will make a great story for our newspaper. So he ends up calling the newspaper and to tell Ed's story because then the people in Mayberry wouldn't be afraid of him. They'd know what, what his reason was for being there. But Ed has walked out the door and while he's while Andy is on the phone with Sarah getting her to call the newspaper, he begins to hear an angry crowd outside. And so he walks out and sees this crowd of people basically attacking Ed, uh, wanting him to leave, go home, go back where you came from, that kind of stuff. And Andy steps in and begins to tell Ed's story to this mob, uh, delivering a stern lecture about how to treat people who may appear a little bit different. And hearing how their friendly town caused a, low, a total stranger to embrace Mayberry as his hometown. And the citizens begin to back down and realize, you know, just, you know, how much they had been misjudging this fella. And so they, that, that goes from there and uh, they, they even offer they're going to go ahead and sell the gas station to him. And the episode actually ends with him going in and Andy says, well, now that you're going to be living here, you should look like us. And so he takes Ed in and puts him in the chair of the barbershop and lets Floyd uh, start to cut his hair and uh, even gets Floyd to uh, try to get his uh, <laughs> try to get his sideburns even by sticking his finger in the ear as a guide. And so that's how the episode actually ends. So there, there you go. So that's a, that's a rundown of the episode. Now, let's go into a few odd facts known by few, right? So in this episode, as I mentioned earlier, actually, this is the first and only episode that, uh, that Walter Baldwin appeared as Floyd the Barber, uh, rather than the more familiar to, uh, to us all, especially to me, Howard McNear. You know, I'm, I'm a little partial to Howard McNear uh, as Floyd. Uh, but I thought Walter Baldwin did a okay. He did a good job as the character he had. But all reports were that his, the actor himself, didn't fit in well with the crew, with the rest of the cast, and so it just didn't work out. So they let him go and eventually brought in Walter Baldwin. Now his last name is never mentioned. Uh, it's, it's not shown. So that's the reason I told you that story in the beginning of we brought in a backstory of why that might happen. All we ever see is it says Floyd's Barbershop. It's painted on the lower left side of the window of the barbershop in this particular episode. Uh, so you would have to see it there, right? That's where you would see it. All right. So speaking of the window, inside Floyd's Barbershop, about mm, three and a half minutes into the episode, a little less than that. Uh, the two men look out the front window and the glass, uh, the, they're, when you see them looking out the window from the front, so you're seeing their faces, uh, there, you can't see any uh, frame, panels, panes in the windows. But when you see from the back as they're looking out the window, there's a four panel window there. So there's four panes. Now the difference is uh, one shot is shot on the set at Desi Lou and the other was shot at 40 acres lot in the actual physical streets of Mayberry that you see on the show. So that's the, that's why there's a difference. And so it jumps back and forth is where you're seeing the pains or you're not seeing the pains looking from inside out of the courthouse, uh, not courthouse, the barbershop or 
uh, from outside the barbershop into the barber, uh, into the barbershop. Yes, got that right. So you'll notice that. Uh, you'll notice that uh, when Ed Sawyer walks in the door to the, when you open the door to the barbershop, to the left there is a door that says beauty shop. It goes into the beauty shop. Uh, so uh, that entrance to the beauty shop disappears later in the series and you never see it again. And later in the series, instead of being a beauty shop, it's actually Orville Monroe's funeral parlor that's right beside Floyd's Barbershop. It's his funeral parlor and TV repair, I should say. Uh, but that door disappears uh, as the series progresses. So there's another little tidbit for you. Uh, let's see here. As uh, Floyd is taking a nap uh, in his barber chair... Andy reads a story in the newspaper about old man Joe McKnight celebrating his 103rd birthday. That's just a little little odd facts known by a few. Uh, Jason over at the Mayberry Hotel, he's the reservations clerk. He attempts to give Ed Sawyer room 209, but Ed swiftly declines that room because he says, that's the room Wilbur Hennessy got drunk in and fell out the window. And so Ed requests room 216 uh, because it's been freshly painted green, although he does say that green is not his favorite color, but it is freshly painted. So he does that. Uh, in that same uh, area, so this is a little bit later in the episode, but you can see a calendar. There's actually two calendars in this particular uh, episode. There's the one that you would see when Ed is actually checking in. It's just to the right of the cubbies where the uh where barney stuck his hand and got the uh got the mouse traps hooked on him there's a little bitty calendar there and then later in the episode when barney is about to stick his hands in those cubbies there's another calendar it's a different calendar on the wall just to the if you're looking at those cubby holes that there just to the right of the door over there there's another calendar so the thinking is by some that that appears to be a calendar of October 1960. And I think that's based on the number of days and the fact that it starts on a particular day. That's how they would have figured out what that month is. There you go. So the gas station in this episode is owned by George uh, Sapley. Sapperly, I'm sorry. George Sapperly. And it's insinuated that Ed buys the gas station at the end of the episode. Uh, but... This is the only episode we ever see Ed Sawyer. So don't really know if he bought the gas station or or if, we also don't know if the same gas station is Wally's filling station. We don't know. We don't know. Maybe that gas station is outside of town a little bit and because it's said later that Wally's is the only gas station in town. So maybe I, we don't know. We don't know. And we do see George Sapperly in the episode. He's at the end of the episode when the crowd, the mob was there with them. Uh, threatening him and trying to get him to leave. He's actually standing behind and to the right of Ed. And, and he actually speaks to him about, hey, we drop by, we'll drop the papers to sell you those, sell you the gas station. Uh, so that he is actually in that episode as well. Uh, at the end of the episode, when, uh, when they open the door to go in and get a haircut, yeah, yeah, that's, that's at the end of the episode. So I'm reading this. So at the end of the episode, when they take Ed Sawyer into Floyd's to get him uh, fixed up where he'll look like everybody else, when they actually open the door to the barbershop to go in there, and it's only like two frames. It's, it is a hard capture here. But you can actually see in the door, when he opens the door, you see in the window the reflection of a large spotlight that was used to light the scene uh, is reflected in the door, and you can see that. So there's a little odd fact you can be watching for. It's very fast. I mean, I I understand why they didn't worry about it being there. They just uh, figured people would think it was a sun or something outside. It's a very quick reflection there. Uh, okay, so let's see. When Andy walks in the barber shop, uh, when they're complaining about Barney's sideburns that's at the beginning of the episode when andy walks in you can see on the ground a uh, small 
marking, a T. You can see it. Uh, you can see it on the ground, and it's showing where he's supposed to stand. There's a T, there's a mark, and those are marks. And you can actually see them on the ground in that episode. So you can see that. Those are where the actors are supposed to stand at certain parts of the scene. And so it's marked on the ground for them to be able to see where they need to be standing. So that's, uh, that's a pretty cool little tidbit. So if you watch for that, you can kind of see it in the, in the particular episode. It's a pretty neat one. Uh, let's see here. Uh, when Ed Sawyer walks into the courthouse uh, to be able to, to talk about it before, before, uh, uh, before his, uh, before the lady, the girl, who's it he likes? I've, I've gone blank now. Uh, before he comes in there to see her, uh, talk about her to Andy, uh, you can see as the doors close in, you can actually see the hand of a stage crew person catching the door where it won't make a lot of noise and it will still shut. So you can actually see that. So Lucy, when he's going to talk about Lucy, you can actually see that. Okay. Uh, I think that's most of the uh, tidbits there, but uh, this is one of the only episodes where you actually see uh, you actually see only a few characters uh, in this episode. It doesn't happen very often. Andy, Barney, and Opie are the only regulars that appear in this particular episode. The rest of the supporting cast are played by actors who either play different characters later or never appeared again in the series. So another cool little tidbit. Uh, let's say here. Uh, so evidently I said at some point that they brought in, that they brought in Walter after Walter. So yeah, they brought in Howard McNear after Walter, if I said it incorrectly earlier. Uh, thank you, Bo Snerdly, for the uh, corrections. Thank you. Now, let's see here. There's a few other notes. When Ed uh, first arrives in the barbershop, he asked Floyd about his rheumatism. Remember that? So he did ask about that. And how did he know that? That was so. We, but now we know that it usually acts up at that time of the year. As Ed's leaving the barbershop, he runs into Miss Buntley. That's who he runs into that has the babies, the twins uh, that we see. And he can actually tell them apart. Yeah, he actually knows uh, which one's which. So she had just uh, stepped out of the Mayberry dry cleaning and pressing shop, by the way. She has twins, Robert and William, in a stroller. And Ed distinguishes the twins apart because William has a little mole right there on his right ear. He knew that. <laughs> so I think that's pretty amazing that uh, that, that was ever in the paper. You know, the... the not why was that ever in the paper that they described that I, I don't know so billy matthews bill matthews he appears in this as lucy's brother right and he's the guy trying to fight with ed in the episode uh, it's played by pat colby he later returns speaking of people that return in episodes as jimmy morgan in the great filling station robbery in 1963 he returns as that so that is all the notes i have for this episode wow i talked a long time about this one didn't i oh my goodness so hopefully you got some information you didn't know or at least it made you smile and brought back some fun memories as we did this so let's go into trivia let's go into the trivia <laughs> so if you guys are ready this is more trivia from our trivial expert paul mulick and to this week's topic is going to be Mount Pilot. Mount Pilot. We're going to do five questions. You ready? <laughs> yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the run through of the episode and the little odd facts known by few and some of the uh, continuity information there as well. All right, number one, number one, five questions worth one point each. Uh, and the topic is Mount Pilot, so maybe that'll help you. All right, who said. If you want a good suit, you've got to go to Mount Pilot. Who said that? Who said if you want a good suit, you got to go to Mount Pilot? <laughs> All right, not going to give you a lot of time. These are harder than last week's. These are not as easy. Last week's were very easy, so we ran through a bunch of them. These are a little harder. Who said if you want a good suit, you got to go to Mount Pilot? Okay. <laughs> All right. 
All right. So let's stop. I'm just to give you the answer. It is impossible for me to read that without trying to do the voice. Okay. So who said, yeah, if you want a good suit, you got to go to my pilot. <laughs> Floyd, Floyd said that. I think I started saying, if you, I did that when I tried to read it to you the first time. So I should have given it away a little bit, but it was Floyd Lawson. Yes, Floyd Lawson, the Howard McNear's version that said that. That was in the episode, Otis Sues the County, by the way. If that's helpful to you. All right. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I tried to read in Floyd's voice. All right, question number two. Number two. Barney was a member of what organization based in Mount Pilot? Barney was a member of what organization based in Mount Pilot? Hmm, that's a tough one. This one is a little bit tough. Barney was a member of what organization based in Mount Pilot? I think this one's a little hard, okay? So let's see, uh, I'm going to give you one more read, and then I'll give you a little hint, and I'm going to give you the answer, okay? Barney was a member of what organization based in Mount Pilot? I'll give you the hint now, okay? So see if you can get it for the hint. With the hint, here we go. It's in the episode, Barney's Uniform, that we find out about this. And the answer is, he's in the Mount Pilot Judo Society. So if you said judo or something like that, I at least get a half a point. But it was the Mount Pilot Judo Society. That's what he's in. Okay. All right. Here's question number three. I think this one's easier. I'm not sure, but let's see. Who drove Thelma Lou to Mount Pilot for a dentist appointment? Who drove Thelma Lou to Mount Pilot for a dentist appointment? Okay. I don't know if you need a hint on this or not, uh, but uh, the last read, I'm going to give you the answer. Pause if you don't want to know. Who drove Thelma Lou to Mount Pilot for a dentist appointment? The answer is Gomer, and that's from the episode Barney and Thelma Lou. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's how you say it. <laughs> that's the episode. All right, got two questions left. Number four, number four. What's the name of the baseball team that played against Opie's team when Andy was the umpire? What's the name of the baseball team that played against Opie's team when Andy was the umpire? Hmm. Yeah, some folks in the chat room said uh, my mom and dad just shook hands on their deal, talking about that last episode. <laughs> All right, here we go. I'm going to give you the answer. Here's the question one last time. What's the name of the baseball team that played against Opie's team with Andy acting as an umpire? The answer, it's from the episode The Ball Game. It's the Mount Pilot Comets. The Mount Pilot Comets. Ooh, good job. So folks in our chat room are getting that right. I see it. Good job. All right, our final question for the day, for the night, whatever time you're reading this. With whom did Otis once share a cell in Mount Pilot's jail? With whom did Otis once share a cell in Mount Pilot's jail? Who did he share a cell with? Share a cell. Sounds like carousel, but no, it's a share a cell. Whom, with whom did Otis once share a cell? at the Mount Pilot Jail. Okay, the answer, <laughs> it's not Mr. Drucker. It's not his name. But if you got that, you get a half a point. So you get a whole point if you got that one in the last one. It was Luke in the episode Rehabilitation of Otis. Rehabilitation of Otis. All right, how did you do, guys? How did you do? How did you do all right? I don't know. So... Uh, thank you to Paul Mulick for these. If you'd like to play along with our chat room, who's playing along right now, join us on Monday nights at 8 p.m. Eastern time at live.twochairsnowaiting.com. And you can join in on all the fun that the guys are having in our chat room. Good job. Uh, somebody said his name was Luke Drucker. <laughs> Mr. Drucker. There you go. Luke Drucker was his name. 
Uh, so that was Mike. Kentucky Mike said that. I see that in there. All right, guys. That is our trivia for the evening. I hope you guys uh, enjoyed that and it worked out for you. All right. So uh, let's see. I got one last thing for us, and it is a story that will likely become a Floyd story. <clears throat> this happened to someone. I told them I would change the names to protect the innocent. <laughs> uh especially since uh, when we first read it, we thought it actually happened to somebody, but I'm not sure at this point. It's a great story. So here, so here we go. I'm going to play. Uh, I'm going to play a little bit of music here. Let's see. Let's play this one. Was that what I was playing a minute ago? I think it was. I played that, didn't I? Let's play this. This will sound better. All right. Here we go. This sounds good for for fun story so i woke up and my dog is laying in the back patio covered in dirt with a rabbit in his mouth and the rabbit's not bloody or anything it's just dirty my neighbor's kids they raise blue ribbon rabbits and instantly i knew this was one of their rabbits I took the rabbit away from the dog and rushed inside and washed all the dirt off of it and dried it. And before the neighbors could get home, uh, you know, I wanted to do that. Uh, it was stiff, but, you know, I'd heard some animals play dead when they are afraid. But I couldn't remember really which ones did that. But anyway, I took it and I placed it back in one of the cages. I ran over there, put it in one of the back their cages in their backyard, and I zoomed right back home. You know, don't judge me for this. Don't judge me. Anyway, about 30 minutes later, I hear my neighbors screaming. And I go outside and ask them, what's wrong? They, they told me that their rabbit died three days ago and they buried it. But now it's back in the cage. <laughs> so that supposedly actually happened to somebody. And I think that is a Mayberry story, if I've ever heard one. That has got to be a story that Floyd will now be telling. I'm just going to turn it all into Mayberry stories. <laughs> I want to thank uh, Ann for providing that story. That's a good story. If you have fun stories like that, send them to me. I enjoy them. That was good. My wife actually found, or the one that told me, notified me that Ann had posted this story because she came in there crying, laughing so hard. Uh, because we were picturing her doing this. <laughs> anyway, it was a fun story. Uh, ouch, man. That does sound like an urban legend to me. That's what folks in the chat room are doing. But boy, that could be an episode of something, couldn't it? That sounds like Barney did it to me. I want it to be a Barney. I think I'm going to make that a Barney story. <laughs> the Andy, that would be a good story. That Something like Barney would do, wouldn't it? All right, guys, that is all I have for us tonight. We have uh, we have run long this evening and talking, uh, so I guess it's good I couldn't find everything I was wanting to show you guys. We're already 30-something minutes in. I think that's enough. Folks, uh, next week we may do the podcast just a little early, so if you're uh, one of the live folks, be watching our Facebook feed, and I'll be sure to let you know. Uh, I got to see what time the NCAA finals are next week. <laughs> so other than that, I really appreciate everybody being here. I would love to hear from you. You can give me a call at 888-684-8415. And you can email me at floyd at imayberry.com. And I do invite you to join us live on Monday nights at 8 o'clock, almost every Monday night. Not every, but almost. And we would love to have you join us as we record this show live. There's a great chat room. There's 50 or so people in the different chat rooms that are running right this moment, all talking about what we're talking about right here. If you'd like to be a part of that, definitely come and check it out. Thanks for being here. Uh, go over to Weavers and check out all the new stuff. It's pretty fun stuff. And until next week, guys, we'll see you here on Two Chairs. Good night, everybody.